Hello everyone. Well today I'm going to be having a look at another Bissell carpet washer. This is the Bissell Power Clean and it's a relatively new model. I haven't bought this one for myself. I bought it for my mum who is about to receive a new puppy and uh, as many dog owners know a new puppy can cause a few accidents on the carpet which is why I got this machine. Now I could have got one of the portable spot cleaners but I think for my mum's use she'll find this easier just to have a compact lightweight upright carpet washer that she can just take out of the cupboard and pick up the occasional accident but she can also use it to freshen up her carpets as well but I thought primarily this will be good for picking up the uh, little messes that puppies can often leave behind. So we'll get this machine out of the box. It's quite a small box so it will need some assembly. Here's everything out of the box. We've got the carpet washer itself, the clean water tank, the instruction book, the handle, the handle grip and a sample bottle of wash and protect cleaning solution. Assembly for this carpet washer is very simple and you won't need any tools to do it. First of all, we'll take the handle of the machine with the Bissell logo to the front and the hook here at the back. Insert it into the cleaner here. Just push it down until it's clicked firmly into position. Then we take the handle which also includes the trigger assembly and that goes with the red part facing front. Push that onto the top of the handle again until it clicks into position. The solution tank slides onto the top of the cleaner like so. Just make sure it's located. Push it down until you hear a click. The mains cable stores on the cleaner on these two hooks at the back of the machine. There's a little clip at the plug end that enables you to secure it to the rest of the cable so it won't unravel as you're carrying the machine. When you come to use the machine you can either turn down the top hook or turn up the bottom hook. If you turn down the top hook all the cable releases in one go. With the instructions comes this warning sheet that asks you to tighten the ring on the dirty water tank. The dirty water tank is located here. To remove it, there are two red clips either side. You need to release those clips and then we can lift out the tank. Now this is the ring that the instructions ask you to tighten. It is tight, but if yours isn't, just make sure you hand tighten it to secure it to make sure it's a nice tight seal. While I've got the dirty water tank, I might as well show you it. This is where you can empty the dirty water from the machine. Just remove this stopper and tip out the dirty water. Always make sure that this stopper is fully in place when you refit it to the machine. If that's not fully seated or it's open, you will get reduced suction and that's why your cleaner isn't picking up the dirt. Inside the tank, there's a float valve. That float valve rises up as the machine fills with water and will cut the suction off when it's full. Always empty the water every time you fill up with clean solution. This all comes apart for cleaning. Obviously, sometimes you're going to clean up some rather nasty stuff and it's a good idea to be able to clean all this tank out. So when you do that, you can remove the float assembly completely, take off the locking ring, and then you can Pull the float assembly out. All this will clean in hot soapy water and now the tank is free to clean as well. When you've cleaned it you can reassemble. you just got to get it in a certain way and it'll only go in a certain way so let's just turn it until we've got it in the correct position. That's it. So you'll know it's in position when it's sitting flush with the bottom of the tank and then you can use the locking ring to secure the float valve assembly in place. Hand tighten it. There's a little filter here at the bottom of the cleaner. Every time you empty the dirty water tank just make sure that this little red mesh filter is free of any fluff or other debris. You can just remove any debris that's gathered over the top or just use a damp cloth. 
With the dirty water tank removed, you can take off the front nozzle if you need to give it a clean. Just pull it away from the machine from the top here and this whole assembly can be cleaned under running water. And you can also give this part here a wipe with a damp cloth. To reassemble, just locate it at the bottom first and then push it into place. To refit the dirty water tank, simply locate it back onto the machine and fasten the two red clips either side. The clean water tank simply lifts out of the cleaner like this and to fill it with water and solution you undo this stopper and on the back of the tank there's a guide you fill it up with warm water or up to 60 degrees so that is quite hot no more than 60 degrees up to this line and then you top it up with bits of solution up to the formula line. Once it's full make sure that the cap is securely tightened and when it's in this position you can swirl it around to make sure that the solution is thoroughly mixed with the water and then place it back on the machine like so. Make sure it clicks into position. The on off switch is located here at the back of the cleaner. It's quite low down. I would have liked to have seen a foot operated on off switch or a hand operated one. So you have to stoop down to switch this machine on and off. Not the most convenient location for the on off switch in my opinion. To recline the handle to the operating position, press this grey pedal. On the underside of the Bissell you'll find the four row power brush that agitates the cleaning solution into the carpet. Just behind this brush you'll find a row of jets that evenly distribute the carpet cleaning solution onto the brushes. At the front of the cleaner you'll find this thin nozzle that's designed to suck up the dirty solution into the recovery tank. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I bought this carpet washer for my mum so she could use it to clean up after a house training puppy. But of course, apart from using it for accidental messes, you can also use this machine to shampoo whole rooms. So I'm going to shampoo my mum's hallway in this video because it's the grubbiest carpet in the house. And then I might take it upstairs and do one of the bedrooms. But before I start cleaning, I need to fill the solution tank with hot water up to 60 degrees and Bissell carpet cleaning solution. I filled the clean water tank with hot water and Bissell cleaning solution. What I like about the design of this tank is when it's upside down for filling, it will stand up so you can put it in the bottom of the sink. You don't have to support the weight of the tank and you can fill it from the top. It also makes it easier when you're topping up the cleaning solution. When the tank is full, make sure that the stopper is on securely and then you can locate the tank back onto the cleaner. Just make sure it's in properly and it clicks into position. To prevent the mains cable from getting in the way, you can secure it on the clip here at the top of the handle. I have to say the instructions for this Bissell carpet washer are quite poor. It's just basically a series of drawings, so it doesn't tell you the best technique to use. So when you're using the machine, it's always best to do one forward and one backward stroke while you're squeezing the solution trigger. When you've done an area, go over the carpet several times without releasing the solution so you can dry as much of the carpet as possible and extract as much of the cleaning solution as you can. So I've just got a small hallway to clean. It's not very dirty, but this is where most of the dirt enters the house. Just going to try the machine out. I will say even with a full tank it is relatively light. You have two big wheels on the back so you can wheel it to the room you're going to clean even when the solution tank is on the machine. So I think it will be very useful for my mother just to be able to wheel this out of the cupboard and pick up those accidental messes. Okay let's clean this hallway.
change in tone of the motor means that the float valve has activated and we need to empty the dirty water tank. So we need to unclip both clips and lift the tank out. And as you can see, well, despite the fact I've only done half of this hallway, that is fairly dirty, but I have cleaned the entrance mat, which does take all the dirt from people's shoes before it can get trampled into the house. So I'll just empty this out and then I'll finish the job. I've almost finished cleaning this hallway, but the float valve has activated again, so I do have to empty the dirty water tank. And considering it's just a very small area and the carpet didn't look too dirty, although there were a few grubby marks, the dirty water inside the tank, you can see it from the foam, that is certainly dirtier than I expected it to be. So I think this carpet washer will be ideal for cleaning up after the new puppy that's due to arrive very soon. Okay, I'll empty this and finish cleaning this hallway. Well, I can safely say that this carpet looks a lot better than it did before I started cleaning it. But how dry is it? Well, obviously, the length of drying time does depend on the type of carpet and how often you go over the carpet with suction only. You need to do that as many times as you can, as slowly as you can, to extract as much water so the carpet doesn't take so long to dry. Now I've seen this demonstration done on a home shopping channel where the gentleman in question lays some blue kitchen roll or blue uh, kitchen towel onto the floor and he sort of taps it gently and reveals that the carpet's dry. Well, this isn't a home shopping channel. This is just me messing about in my mother's hall. So I'm gonna kneel on it. And I expect we will get a damp patch. Well, we have, but to be honest, that isn't too bad. I am kneeling on it now and I'm not getting 
sopping wet knees obviously no carpet washer is going to leave your carpet very dry you're going to need to allow drying time but that's not bad but i did go over this several times to make sure i couldn't see any more of the solution going up the clear nozzle at the front of the machine so for a lightweight budget cleaner like this i think that is a very acceptable result there are a couple of downsides i've discovered with this bissell First of all, it is very, very noisy. The next time I use this to clean the bedroom, I'm going to wear ear defenders. It is very loud, but most carpet washers are pretty loud, louder than many vacuum cleaners anyway. And another thing, it is quite hungry with cleaning solution. I did have to refill the solution tank twice to clean a small area. But if your carpet isn't very dirty, you don't have to make two wet passes. Just squeeze the solution trigger as you're slowly moving the machine forward and then release it when you pull it back. That way you'll use less cleaning solution and that will work fine if your carpet isn't very heavily soiled. If it is very dirty, you will need to use two wet passes. But once the carpet is clean, if you keep on top of it on a regular basis, you won't need to use quite so much solution. Well that's about the end of today's video on the Bissell Power Clean Compact Carpet Washer. If you have any comments or questions please leave them below. Don't forget to subscribe, click the bell icon and you'll be notified of all my new uploads. So until the next video thanks for watching and I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.